this is our last uh, seminar in our seminar series this year. And uh, we are very happy to invite Professor Toshiyuki Otsuka to give us a talk. Uh, Professor Otsuka uh, is working in Kyoto University and uh, uh, his research interest uh, is in nonlinear control theory and the real-time optimization methods with application to mechanical systems, uh, including drones, robots, automobiles, and so on. Uh, he's the recipient of numerous awards, uh, including the Size Outstanding Paper Award, the Size Outstanding Book Award, and the Size Control uh, Division Pioneer Award, as well as the Kimura Award. He's a member of Size and a senior member of IEEE and AIAA, and he has um, organized the NOC uh, chair of the ACE IFAC conference on nonlinear model predict control. And he's going to give us a talk today on numerical optimization for nonlinear MPC from smooth nonlinearity to switches, jumps, and logic. So let's welcome Professor Atsuka. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, let me share the screen now. Uh, okay, now you can see the screen uh, slide, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to yeah this. Uh, webinar. It is my great honor to give a talk in this webinar series. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about nonlinear model predictive control, uh, including uh, recent advances in non-smooth systems involving switches, jumps, and logic. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, roughly speaking, as you may know, uh, model predictive control and uh, MPC is a kind of feedback control uh, by real-time optimization of uh, systems response uh, of a finite future. Uh, it is very general and useful approach to control complex systems uh, as long as real-time optimization is possible. Uh, I guess you know some uh, eye-catching uh, applications of MPC in recent years, uh, including a landing rocket, a humanoid robot, and an autonomous drifting car. And MPC also attracts growing interest of the machine learning community in recent years as a general framework of real-time decision-making. And there is an EU project, EOAX, uh, to explore interdisciplinary areas of MPC and machine learning, and furthermore, uh, MPC also attracts a growing interest of the robotic community. So um, before getting into the detail, I'd like to clarify the goal of uh, this talk. Uh, I'm basically working on a general methodology in systems and control, rather than a specific class of systems such as uh, robots. So I'm first presenting an overview of nonlinear model predictive control, NMPC, from a broader perspective as a general framework in systems and control rather than focusing on robotics. And at the same time, one of uh, challenging problems in the MPC community is efficient computation methods for non-smooth systems or hybrid systems uh, in general. So, and they are of course applicable to robotics. So I will also present some of recent advances in NMPC for non-smooth systems. So uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I will give you a very brief overview of NMPC, including the essential idea of real-time optimization algorithms and some application examples. I will also briefly introduce some software tools for NMPC, in particular uh, based on a parallel computation method. Uh, after that, I will introduce some recent advances in computational algorithms for NMPC uh, or optimal control problems for non-smooth systems. Uh, in particular, I will introduce a real-time algorithm for NMPC involving switches and state jumps, and then show you a hardware experiment of NMPC for a quadruped based on a whole body dynamic model without any simplifications. 
And then I will also introduce some of recent topics, uh, such as optimal control problems with equilibrium constraints or signal temporal logic specifications. This method can also be applied to various control problems in robotics. Okay, now uh, let us begin with an overview of NMPC, the essential idea of real-time optimization and some applications. Uh, MPC is a kind of feedback control by real-time optimization of a system's response over a finite future at each sampling time. And let us imagine we are driving a car on a dark night road uh, where we can see objects only in the range of the headlight. Uh, then we should op predict and the motion of the car and optimize our driving action of a foreseeable future based on available information for safe driving. Uh, so we determine uh, our control action of a finite future in our mind, uh, but we use only the initial value of the optimal control corresponding to the current state, a uh, current time in the real world. Uh, after a moment, our car proceeds and we get new information. Then uh, we should update our prediction and optimal control immediately based on new information. Uh, an important point here is that we update our control action with a, within a much shorter time interval uh, than the horizon of prediction and optimization. Then doing these things at every time instant, we can drive the car safely, avoiding obstacles. Uh, this is the idea of MPC. I think the idea of MPC is natural and uh, probably most of us are doing similar things in our daily lives to realize some intelligent behaviors. Uh, mathematically, MPC is formulated as a variant of finite horizon optimal control problems. Uh, the future response of a system is predicted by using the state equation, and the constraints are also imposed in general. Uh, we consider uh, nonlinear systems in general, and at, the, at each time t, we determine the control input of a finite future to minimize a given performance index uh, from current time t to a finite future t plus capital T, uh, which is called a receding horizon. The only difference of MPC from a standard optimal control problem is that the horizon of this performance index is uh, not fixed uh, and moves as time increases. Uh, if the optimal control uh, you opt, uh, minimizing this performance index is obtained over the, this horizon, um, then uh, only the initial value of the optimal control is used as the actual input, u of t, to the system. And please note that uh, the initial state in this optimal control problem is given by the current state. Uh, x of t of the system. And of course, the optimal control depends on the current state, x of t. Uh, so the actual input to the system implicitly depends on the current state, x of t, uh, which means MPC is a kind of state feedback. And remember that we can find this uh, state feedback explicitly as a function of x and t in general. Uh, instead, we can uh, just compute the input numerically and the numerical computation, a numerical solution depends on the uh, current state. And of course, it is computationally demanding to solve a nonlinear optimal control problem numerically, and implementation of MPC is challenging for fast and complex nonlinear systems. And now I, I briefly summarize the history of MPC. Uh, I wonder if you are interested in these kind of things, but similar ideas as MPC go back to 1950s and 1960s. And some MPC type uh, control methods have been proposed in the field of process control uh, with different names and some different formulations. And from 1980s to 1990s, some people have analyzed the closed loop stability of NMPC and finally, uh, since 1990s, uh, some people have started to work on numerical solution methods for MPC. The mainstream was uh, offline linear programming or quadratic programming. 
uh, to construct a state feedback as a piecewise assigned function beforehand. Uh, however, at the same time, a uh, few people, uh, including myself, have also started to develop real-time optimization method for NMPC, uh, which is the main topic of this talk. And there are two major categories of solution methods for MPC, offline methods and online methods. In offline methods, the state feedback control law is constructed uh, offline uh, beforehand. And since the state feedback is stored as a function of the state explicitly, they are often called explicit MPC. A typical form of the state feedback is a piecewise assigned function of the state which can be viewed as a natural extension of linear state feedback. Uh, essential drawback of explicit MPC is that it suffers from the curse of dimensionality and applicable uh, only to low dimensional and simple systems. Uh, of course, we can also use a neural network to learn state feedback these days, but its training would be very time consuming and it would be uh, it will also be difficult to realize uh, reliable state feedback with a sufficient accuracy. And on the other hand, in online methods, uh, an optimal control over a horizon is computed in real time for the current state and the state feedback is defined implicitly as an optimization program to determine the control input. And it is obviously computationally demanding and seems impossible to solve an optimal control problem within a very short sampling period for fast and complex nonlinear systems. Uh, however, there have been some real-time optimization methods tailored for MPC. Uh, for example, I have proposed uh, some real-time algorithms in the form of ordinary differential equations to update the optimal solution. So we can derive uh, these differential equations just by differentiating optimality conditions, and the differential equations can be integrated without any iterative searches. So they exploit the continuous time nature of MPC. And there are so many other methods in the literature, and these are just a limited number of uh, references. Uh, Real-time optimization for an MPC is a very active area of research these days. Uh, the key idea in online methods is exploiting a uh, structure of the problem to reduce computation. And moreover, parallel computation is getting uh, important because multi-core processors are very common nowadays. So in the following, I quickly introduce the idea of real-time optimization algorithm uh, derived as a um, uh, differential equation together with some application examples. So in general optimization problems, numerical solution method normally involves some iterative searches of a solution, uh, such as gradient method and Newton type method. But an iterative search of an optimal solution is computational demanding and may fail to converge within a short sampling period. So this is the difficulty in implementation of NMPC. However, we just want to solve MPC problems and we can exploit some feature of MPC. And an important feature of MPC is that the small change in the optimal solution during the short sampling period can be traced without any iterative searches. I mean, if the problem is sufficiently smooth and the sampling period is sufficiently short, then the change in the optimal solution should be very small. And this small change uh, in the solution uh, can be computed accurately based on the sensitivity of the problem. And then we can update the optimal solution without any iterative searches, which is a totally different situation from solving a single optimization problem only once. So, and this idea of tracing a time-bearing solution is a kind of the continuation method or homotopy method, right? Uh, which is well known in numerical solution method for nonlinear equations. And furthermore, we can apply uh, the GMRS method, uh, which is one of uh, cryo of subspace method for solving linear equations efficiently to evaluate the sensitivity of the optimal solution. So in principle, we can update the, the optimal solution by solving only one linear equation at each sampling time. And the method based on the combination of the continuation method and the GMRS is called 
the continuation GM ref or CGM ref for short. And now let me show you some application examples uh, br briefly. The first example is a position control of an under-actuated hovercraft and it may seem a uh, system. Uh, but uh, the, to thrust as a foot on the body and there is no actuation in the lateral direction. So it is well known in control theory that uh, there, is, there is no smooth state feedback to stabilize uh, given equilibrium in this system. And in this experiment, the sampling period was 8.3 milliseconds, uh, which was specified by the frame rate of a uh, camera for measuring the position and attitude of the hovercraft. Uh, but the actual computation time was below 2 milliseconds on the PC at that time, I mean more than 20 years ago. And the next example is uh, an industrial application to auto automatic ship maneuvering. Uh, this is a special working vessel for offshore construction. And in contrast to, to the hovercraft in the last slide, uh, this vessel has redundant actuators. Uh, but MPC is extremely suitable for this system uh, because MPC can achieve the optimal use of these redundant actuators. And this vessel succeeded to track a given route accurately and efficiently with optimal coordination of the redundant actuators. And the next example is uh, uh, the uh, position control of a hexacopter with uh, failed rotors. Uh, we use a fully nonlinear model with the attitude uh, represented by quaternions, and we also take constraints on the thrusts into account. And please note, each rotor can generate only positive thrust. So control of this hexacopter is very difficult, even if several rotors remain active. And this video shows a simulation result of a very critical situation where three rotors on one side failed. And after falling down, the hexacopter immediately recovers its position with remaining rotors. And this aggressive control is achieved by MPC with the computation time below 0.2 milliseconds. And other applications include uh, tethered satellite, robots, automobiles, formation flight of helicopters, uh, floating offshore wind turbines, and a flight experiment of online path generation for a real aircraft. And MPC has also been applied to the temperature control of superconducting magnets in the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, at CERN. Uh, the temperature of superconducting magnets exhibits highly nonlinear behavior due to superfluidative helium near absolute zero temperature. And another challenging application is control of distributed parameter systems. Uh, for example, MPC can be applied to generate some desired flows or mixing in a thermal fluid system descri described by the Navier-Stokes equations with uh, business approximation, which are nonlinear partial differential equation. In this case, the control input is, is the thermal flux through the boundary. Okay, I would, I would also like to mention that the real-time optimization algorithm for MPC can be uh, also applied to other problems, uh, such as uh, receding horizon differential games and moving horizon estimation because the conditions of optimality are almost the same as those in standard optimal control problems. And moreover, one of adaptive control methods is applicable even when the control input is determined numerically uh, without any explicit representation. So it can be easily combined with an NMPC. Okay, next, uh, let me introduce some uh, software tools and uh, parallel computation method for NMPC. So since MPC is a very general framework for feedback control and in general involves various nonlinear functions and also their derivative. So it is a natural idea to use uh, simple computation or automatic differentiation to generate a computer program for MPC automatically. And in the case of explicit MPC, there are a matter of tools for multi-parametric optimization, uh, MPT and MPT3. 
And in the case of real-time optimization, I have developed an automatic code generation tool for NMPC based on some symbolic computation language, Mathematica. And after that, I and collaborators have also developed automatic code generation tools uh, for the CGM REST uh, method based on uh, Maple and Python Jupyter Notebook. And I would also like to mention that the latest version of MATLAB MPC Toolbox now supports uh, CGM REST as its solver. And ACADO and ACADO's uh, code generation toolkit tools are developed by Moritz Deal's research group. And there are many uh, other tools. Uh, I'm sorry, I omit. Uh, I just refer you to a paper by uh, Fashulem and co-authors about ACADO's in which you can find an um, extensive list of software tools for MPC. And this uh, Power NMPC is a code generation toolkit uh, developed by Hao Yan Den, a former PhD student of mine, for a parallel computation algorithm for NMPC. And Robotalk is a software tool developed by Sotaro Katayama, another former PhD student of mine, for NMPC of rigid body systems. And in this talk, I will briefly introduce our tools, uh, Autogen U for Jupyter and Power NMPC. And I will also uh, introduce uh, Robotalk uh, later as a tool for robotic systems. Okay, and this is a schematic of code generation by Autogen U for Jupyter. Uh, it is a Jupyter notebook, a kind of script file in which the user can input uh, the mathematical model and the performance index and other settings for MPC in Python. And then uh, when the user executes uh, this notebook, uh, problem-dependent C++ code for simulation is automatically generated by uh, simple computation. And this notebook is also capable of generating problem-dependent Python packages to call the MPC controller from a Python program, which is very convenient. And next, I introduce uh, Power NMPC, a toolkit for parallel computation for NMPC. So since parallel computation can only reduce the computation time of the parallelizable part, uh, it, so its speed up is essentially limited by the non-parallelizable part, no matter how many cores you have, uh, which is an important implication of a well-known Amudar law. Uh, so we want to find algorithms to make the parallelizable part as large as possible. Uh, however, in the case of NMPC, we have to solve an optimal control problem uh, where a future state on the horizon depends on the past input and the state by the causality of a dynamical system. So it seems difficult to parallelize the optimization over the horizon. Uh, because of those dependencies between variables. However, we can introduce a special structure in the optimization problem for NMPC by a suitable discretization. And these equations are the KKT conditions for time step I uh, of the optimal control problem discretized by a reverse time discretization method, uh, such as the backward Euler method. And you can see that uh, variables uh, from the neighboring time steps, I mean, xi minus one and lambda i plus one uh, appear only linearly in, this K in these KKT conditions, which means there are only linear couplings between neighboring time steps. And moreover, you can also see that the KKT conditions have an exactly same form for all time steps on the horizon, including the initial time step and the terminal time step. And that is all sub problems have an exactly same size over the horizon. And this is an ideal situation for parallel computation because the computation time depends on the largest sub problem, right? So, and after all, the problem are now reduces to a set of uh, sub-problems of uh, same form with linear coupling, uh, which is a nice structure brought by the reverse time discretization method. Then uh, we can show that uh, the cost state lambda, uh, lambda i, is linear in xi minus 1, and the sequence of their sensitivity matrices is determined 
over the horizon backward from the terminal step N to the initial step one. And of course, this backward dependency is not suitable for parallel computation. Uh, however, if we approximate these sensitivity matrices with their values at the previous iteration, then we can parallelize uh, computationally expensive parts in Newton's method and still prove the superlinear convergence of the algorithm. And this is the main idea of parallel computation for NMPC. Uh, then we have uh, developed a uh, code generation toolkit per NMPC for the proposed parallel algorithm, uh, which is available on GitHub. Uh, per NMPC is a MATLAB based tool and generates C or C code by symbolic computation. And this slide shows comparison of computation times per update of state of the art solvers. A uh, per NMPC is not fastest with with a single core, but it is fastest uh, with six cores and achieved four times speed up. And this is a numerical experiment of a robot manipulator. Uh, this manipulator has seven degrees of freedom and its mathematical model is too complicated to write down. So we combine the proposed parallel algorithm with a fast algorithm tailored for rigid body dynamics. Then we can implement NMPC within one millisecond, even for this fast and complex nonlinear systems. Okay, now let us move on to recent advances in MPC and optimal control problems for non-smooth systems. Uh, recently, there have been notable advances in real-time optimization methods for NMPC involving switches in dynamics and jumps in the state. Uh, for example, the dynamics of legged robots uh, switch when the contact pattern of their feet with the ground change and their state jump discontinuously at the contact of their feet with the ground. And of course, this is a quite complicated and challenging problem. Uh, however, we succeeded to uh, realize uh, this challenging optimization problem in real time by combining various techniques to exploit special structures in the problem. So before getting into technical details, let me briefly introduce two paradigms in formulation of MPC or optimal control for robotic systems with contact. Uh, one is a so-called contact implicit approach, uh, where we try to optimize everything without any pre-specified references. Uh, for example, in the case of a walking robot, we have to optimize the contact pattern. I mean, when and where to place which leg on the ground. Uh, so we have to optimize the contact pattern as well as trajectory, uh, which leads to an optimization problem involving binary variables or complementarity constraints. Then uh, this kind of optimization problem is very hard to solve, even in offline due to the combinatorial nature of the problem. And another formulation is called contact explicit approach, where we assume that a higher level planner gives contact patterns about the placement of the legs beforehand. So for a given uh, contact pattern, MPC just uh, optimizes the contact timing or switching time and the state and control trajectories. In this case, we don't have to care about combinatorial optimization. So this approach would be more pra practical than the contact implicit approach. However, we still have to deal with discontinuities in the dynamics and also have to optimize the switching times. And so it is still challenging to implement MPC based on the contact explicit approach. And I will present the contact explicit approach first but I will also introduce our ongoing work for more general problems, including the contact implicit approach uh, later. Okay, now I briefly explain the model of robot dynamics. Uh, first, in a robotic system, there are some inequality constraints to be satisfied at every time instant. For example, the position, velocity, and torque in each joint are in general limited within certain ranges. And moreover, friction forces between the legs and the, the environment are also limited, uh, which are often represented as friction cones. 
Uh, here we assume the contact pattern is given about placement of the legs by uh, some higher level planner. Then at every sampling time, we optimize the control input and switching times by minimizing a performance index of a finite future subject to the state equation, uh, state jump equation, equality constraint uh, describing the contact and inequality constraint representing some limitations in some variables. And this is nothing but an optimal control problem of a switcher system uh, with switching time optimization. Uh, to solve to solve this optimal control problem numerically, we first discretize uh, this problem into a finite dimensional optimization problem by the this direct multiple shooting method. Uh, that is, uh, we introduce a finite number of discretization grids and introduce the state and the control input on each grid. Then uh, optimal control problem is reduced to a nonlinear programming problem. Uh, in particular, we basically fix the number of grids between the switching times and apply an interior point method with a fixed variable parameter. Then we can guarantee the local convergence of a Newton type method because we are simply solving a nonlinear programming problem of a fixed structure. And for, for the nonlinear programming problem in the last slide, we can show that a Newton step, a Newton type iteration is nothing but solving the following quadratic programming problem, uh, a QP problem, uh, where delta xi, delta ui, and delta tk denote the Newton steps of the state, input, and switching times, respectively. And please note that the index, the index of delta t is different from those of delta x and delta u uh, because switches do not necessarily occur at every grid. And this uh, quadratic cost function with the indefinite Hessian matrix is minimized uh, with respect to uh, delta ui and delta tk. And then delta xi is determined from uh, delta ui and delta tk. Then we can derive a Riccati recursion algorithm by applying the uh, idea of dynamic programming to this QP. And then uh, we can construct a sequence of uh, small, smaller QP subproblems backward recursively. And then we solve this QP to determine each of delta xi, delta ui, and delta tk, respectively. And this is efficient because we have to solve only a sequence of small QP subproblems. And in particular, we can show that the backward recursion takes the same form even across the switching time by modifying the recursive formula for the small QP subproblems. And the computational complexity grows only linearly with respect to the number of discretization grids on the horizon. And in order to realize whole body MPC with switching time optimization or quadruped, we need some other techniques for efficient optimization, uh, although I skip uh, details. Okay, now uh, we verify the effectiveness of the proposed MPC through physical simulations. Uh, we are, here we compare the proposed uh, whole body MPC with online switching time optimization and the whole body MPC without, uh, with fixed switching time. And for both MPC, we gave the same initial guess including the switching times. And then only the proposed method with switching time optimization succeeds in jumping simulation, which demonstrates the importance of switching time optimization. And we run both MPC at 400 Hertz, uh, which corresponds to the uh, sampling, sampling period of 2.5 milliseconds. And the proposed method achieved 1.3 milliseconds computation time per update. So that is our method achieved real-time optimization, even for this complicated problem. And moreover, we have also conducted a hardware experiment of NMPC for a quadrupedal robot, limiting A1, which has many actuators and sensors. We deal with whole-body robot dynamics and rigid contact model 
without simplification, and we optimize the timing of contacts explicitly as well as the sequence. And this is a video of the hardware experiment, and as shown here, our MPC achieved successive dynamic jumping. And also, in this case, we run MPC at 400 health, uh, corresponding to a sampling period of 2.5 milliseconds. And the average computation time per update was, again, 1.3 milliseconds, about a half of the sampling period. So now we can implement MPC for the whole body dynamics of this complicated robotic system with rigid contact in real time. And then we have developed an open source software for NMPC of robotic system, uh, Robotalk, uh, which is also available on GitHub. Uh, this is a rather specialized tool for robotic system than a general purpose tool. Uh, in addition to several techniques for optimization, an important component for NMPC of robotic system is a library of fast rigid body dynamics algorithm, uh, Pinocchio. Uh, this is a very efficient library to uh, compute forward dynamics, inverse dynamics, and their sensitivity, exploiting special structures in dynamics of robotic system. If you describe the model of a robot in the unified robot description format, URDF, then Robotalk defines a fast solver for NMPC of the robot with specified contact patterns. Okay, now let me also introduce a numerical solution method for optimal control problems with equilibrium constraints. Uh, this is a very general framework for optimal control of non-smooth dynamical systems and can be applied to contact implicit model of robotic systems with contacts, as well as the trajectory and switching times of the of a hybrid system uh, with, uh, sorry, uh, to, this can be applied to contact implicit models of robotic systems with contact with no pre-specified contact pattern. I mean, we can optimize the mode sequence as well as the trajectory and the switching time of a hybrid system. And this is, of course, even more challenging the, than the optimization of switching times for a given mode sequence, but we are working on a promising method for numerical solution. Uh, in general, an optimal control program with equilibrium constraints, uh, OCPEC, is formulated as shown here. Uh, it looks like a standard optimal control problem consisting of a uh, uh, performance index, inequality and equality constraints, and the state equation of the system to be controlled. But the only difference is the last constraint. Uh, which are called equilibrium constraints defined by variational inequalities. I will explain in the next slide. Uh, various kinds of switching phenomena, such as contact, frictions, and general complementarity conditions can be formulated in this form. And please note that there is no switching time explicitly in this problem. So that is the reason why this problem can deal with contact implicit models of robotic systems. So specifically, this condition is defined like this. Uh, this SOL operator uh, gives the solution set of the following equilibrium problem. Uh, find P in a given set X uh, such that this variational inequality is satisfied for all Y in X. Uh, this is too abstract, and you may wonder what this condition means. So uh, let us focus on uh, a box constrained uh, variational inequalities uh, without loss of generality, where set X is given by component-wise intervals. Uh, general variational inequalities can be transformed into this form. Then the solution set of each component of P and K is given by the uh, line segments in this figure. And this set is expressed like this, this condition. And so you could imagine this solution set can represent various switching phenomena, such as contact forces and friction forces. And furthermore, these variational inequalities are also equivalent to a set of inequality constraints 
uh, which violate standard constraint qualifications. I mean, a kind of ill-conditioned constraints can also be represented by uh, variational inequalities. So variational inequalities can represent a very general class of problems. Uh, however, since variational inequalities are ill-conditioned constraints, not satisfying standard constraint qualifications, so we modify uh, uh, them by introducing uh, some small parameter s uh, for numerical computation. The first method is uh, smooth approximation uh, of a projection operator in an equivalent representation of the variational inequalities. Then the solution set is modified to be a smooth curve like this dashed line in this figure. And the second method is the regularization of the inequalities with a small parameter s so that the variational inequalities lead to a feasible region with interior points, uh, like the green region in this figure. Then we can apply some numerical solution methods to the modified problem satisfying constraint qualifications. Now uh, let us go back to the optimal control problem. So now these equilibrium constraints are now reformulated as I explained in the last slide, uh, where s is the small parameter. And so if th this s goes to zero, then this equality is identical to the original constraint. Uh, furthermore, the horizon is discretized into a finite number of grids, and the state equation uh, reduces to equality constraints. Then the discretized problem is nothing but a nonlinear program problem, and its KKT conditions can be obtained like this. And the first conditions are complementary conditions, and they are also kind of equilibrium constraints. Um, so we introduce a uh, smooth approximation to these complementarity conditions again. And in particular, we employ the so-called Fisher-Baumeister function with another small parameter, z. And so after all, now we have a set of nonlinear equations for the state, input, cost state, and other Lagrange multipliers over the discretized horizon. And thanks to the two reformulations we have introduced, we can apply uh, Newton's method to these equations as long as S and Z are positive. And please note uh, that Newton's method in the present formulation does not enforce the iterates to remain in the, the interior of the feasible region in the original problem. So we call this method as a non-interior point method. And we can expect that this non-interior point method has a better convergence property than an interior point method because it can choose a large Newton step outside the very narrow and distorted feasible region. And furthermore, we can also apply the continuation method to gradually decrease the parameters S and Z uh, towards zero to improve the accuracy of the solution, avoiding numerical difficulties. So now let me show you numerical examples. Uh, the first example is a linear uh, equilibrium system shown here. And this looks simple, but please note that the mode switching sequence is not given beforehand at all. Uh, then the proposed non-interior point method uh, generates a uh, local optimal solution in this figure, and you can see a switching behavior uh, generated automatically by the proposed method. And this slide compares the number of iterations between the proposed non-interior point method and the standard interior point method. And in this case, we don't use the continuation method and S is fixed. And you can see that the number of iterations of the non-interior point method does not increase significantly, even for small values of the smoothing parameter S. And you can also see that the non-interior point method outperforms the interior point method for small values of S. And this slide uh, compares. Uh, now let me show you a more practical example, a uh, three-card system. 
Here we would like to move these three boxes by actuating only the, the green box in the middle. So other two boxes, uh, red one and blue ones, uh, in the left and the right are just pushed by the green one. And of course, we have no predefined sequence when and which one we should push. However, the proposed method generates an optimal control input involving reaction forces, as shown in this animation. And this, uh, yeah, and this method worked quite well, but rather heuristic. So recently, we are also working on a more sophisticated and systematic reformulation of optimal control problems with equilibrium constraints. Uh, we propose to use a so-called gap function for relaxation of equilibrium constraints and design a smooth gap function with some nice properties carefully. And also, although there are many existing methods for relaxation, but we found our gap function is more promising in terms of efficiency, robustness, solution accuracy, and the minimum value of the cost. And we will present this result at the, the up, upcoming conference on NMPC uh, to be held this August in Kyoto. Okay, now, uh, now I will present another ongoing work on, on even more general control problems involving uh, temporal, sorry, signal temporal logic, STL specifications. So now we formulate an optimal control problem of a linear discrete time system with an STL specification. And STL specification is a statement involving some temporal logic, logic uh, regarding uh, continuous, time, continuous value signals. For example, in the case of a mobile robot, we may want to specify its task with some logical conditions as shown here. And we can represent an STL specification as an inequality constraint by introducing a so-called robustness function rho here. And here we assume the specification is constructed by combining this linear function, minimum operator, and maximum operator. Then we can represent various STL specifications as a non-negativity constraint on the robustness function. And we try to maximize this robustness function so that the specification is satisfied with some margin. And we can also consider an additional cost in the optimization problem. So after all, this is a nonlinear programming problem involving continuous functions. However, unfortunately, uh, it is difficult to solve the optimal control problem with an STL specification because yeah, the robustness function is highly non-complex by nested maximum and minimum operators. So we need some twist. So of course we can, we could apply existing nonlinear programming solvers such as uh, SQP naively, but it would not work well uh, ignoring all higher order information at each iteration. So here we propose a new convex optimization based encoding framework. Uh, it decomposes the robustness function to into a con convex part and a concave part, and then apply the convex optimization solver by uh, linearizing uh, only the concave part. And then uh, moreover in our setting, oh sorry, uh, moreover in our setting, the proposed approach still reduces to an SQP. And however, uh, this SQP uh, differs from the conventional SQP because it approximates only the minimum uh, operators uh, derived from disjunctive operators thanks to the decomposition of the robustness function. And we can, uh, decompose the robustness function uh, systematically by exploiting a hierarchical struct a tree structure in the robustness function. And we also introduce some other techniques for efficient computation. Uh, please check our papers for details. Okay, now we demonstrate our method in a motion planning example called uh, two target specifications. 
the robot needs to avoid the, the obstacle in the center, uh, stay for time TD at either B1 or B2 waypoint, and then reach the goal. Uh, for example, this blue trajectory is obtained by the mixed integer programming, MIP uh, method. And in the following, we compare our method, proposed method with this MIP approach and the naive SQP approach in terms of computational time and robustness. Uh, this slide compares the computation time of the three methods. Uh, our method in blue uh, consistently uh, maintains the lowest computation time, even when the horizon increases, and the green MIP uh, did not finish compute computation within, time, within a time limit beyond the horizon of 100. And the orange uh, naive SQP also showed volatility depending on the horizon, and moreover, as marked with the crosses, naive SQP becomes infeasible, infeasible for several horizons. And regarding the robustness value, the naive SQP exhibits some variations depending on the horizon, uh, whereas our method consistently achieves a value close to the global optimum, I mean, around 0 0.5. So as a whole, our proposed method solve the problem with STL specifications uh, faster than existing methods with sufficient accuracy. Okay, so now let me summarize my talk. I hope you enjoyed. Um, MPC is a very general framework for feedback control of dynamical systems and real-time optimization is a key component for implementation of MPC. And there are remarkable, remarkable advances in real-time optimization algorithms and software tools for MPC and the applications. In particular, whole body MPC with switching time optimization for robotic systems with contacts is now possible with a sampling period in the order of milliseconds. And optimal control problems uh, for more general non-smooth or hybrid systems are now active areas of research in the MPC community. And even though uh, research of MPC is now getting matured, but I'm sure that there are still many things to do. Okay, and these are colleagues, students, and collaborators uh, co-authoring papers I mentioned in this talk. And I really enjoy working with them. And, and there are many other topics, students and collaborators I could not mention today. And before finishing my talk, uh, please let me invite you all to the next IFAC conference on nonlinear model predictive control, NMPC, to be held this August in Kyoto, Japan. Uh, this is one of the important conferences for the NPC community. And I'm serving as the national organizing chair, uh, committee chair, and preparing for the conference with the great help of Moritz Dill serving as the IPC chair. Uh, we have invited uh, outstanding researchers to give talks about hot topics in this field. Uh, the review process has already finished. However, you can still make early registrations by May 1st. And uh, the late registration will be, of course, possible until the conference. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you in Kyoto. OK, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Azuka. And uh, now we are opening floor for questions. Well, if nobody has any questions, I'm I'm happy to uh, to jump in and ask one. So I had a question going back to the the parallelization uh, yes conversation back in the beginning. Uh, I think you said you had speed up for uh, six threads. Uh, yes. Did you ever try uh, leveraging like more threads or more parallelism? Oh, Was oh yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah, and let's see. So in the paper, yeah, you can find uh, some other example, new mega experiment uh, using more, yeah, parallel, yeah, processors. And uh, yeah. yeah, we achieved a uh, yeah, significant speed up actually. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, so I, I've done some some GPU. Uh, ah, GPU. I stuff, see. You know. Um, I, uh, yes, yes, 
Yeah. And you end up with some really interesting trade-offs where, you know, parts of the problem, as you're saying, paralyze quite nicely and parts don't, you know, and these sorts of tricks are, uh, seem really interesting and, and helpful for doing that. I did one weird one where we were splitting up a DDP and we were trying to, you know, pass things in between iterations and, you know, but then you sort of start to break the convergence properties of the algorithm. But I wonder if, uh, you know, adding in additional variables, maybe you don't break the convergence, even if you increase the number of sort of chunks. So, so yeah, so, uh, yeah, of course, in general, we need to carefully design the algorithm. Yeah. To take the, yeah, the advantage of our computation. So as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, so we can reduce the computation time of only parallelizable part. And but of course, in the case of optimal control problems, we have the dependency of the variables on the yeah, time axis on the horizon. So that's a really a big problem. And yeah, it seemed fast, yeah, impossible. But um, yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, we can introduce a very nice structure in the problem. And uh, yeah, so the point here is, so yeah, besides this nice structure, uh, one point, technical point, is that we introduce the uh, very, um, how to say, very small amount of approximation. And actually, in the case of linear and quadratic optimization problem, optimal control problem, we can show that this sensitivity matrix is, in fact, constant. So, yeah, so, um, so it is quite reasonable, even in general cases, that this sensitivity matrix can be approximated by the yeah, previous value in the iteration because it should only change very slowly. So that's the reason why we can still show the super linear convergence. So yeah, of course, in general, there should be some trade-off between the yeah, computational efficiency and the yeah, convergence speed. But I think this is one of the yeah, best possible yeah, uh, yeah, compromise we can make. Oh, that's really interesting. Thanks. Uh, maybe I can ask a question um, yes. on the relaxation of the uh, you know complementary constraint. So mm -hmm. uh, in that slide, I noticed a figure where. Uh, you know, the, the product of those two uh, variables is equal to a smaller value, which mm. is, you know, in the positive uh, quadrant, but there's yes. another yes. Uh, relaxation that's, you know, in the other direction, which is quite interesting. Can you talk a little bit more on, you know, how, how that has worked? You mean the last slide? Yeah, it's a very much to the, yes, yeah, this oh. one. Yeah, actually, yeah, Kanju would be more, yeah, uh, familiar with this kind of technical detail. But uh, yeah, in yeah, actually, yeah, in the uh, optimization community, there are a lot of work on this kind of, yeah, relaxation. Yeah, and uh, so and uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Kanju, could you help me about okay. the details? Uh, so, 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 can you hear my voice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, generally speaking. Uh, okay, so you can see that there are several, at least five or six relation formulation for the complementary constraint. Uh, probably the first, I mean the 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 first, you uh, I mean the first the proposing the two thousand by scale is the most efficient uh, approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. on the recent survey paper by uh, Professor Morris Gross Research, and the other for uh. Reformation is that some of them actually are disconnected. For example, the third, the third uh, reformation that uh, relation the uh, complementary constraint in as a two disconnect set, and also some of them actually are non smooth. So if you consider the practical, uh, how say, if you consider the, the, the practical application, then the first formulation is the most efficient approach yes. and the most simple one. And recently, we also try provide some uh, other new formulation uh, using the get function. Probably in the in the later, I, we will give uh, give some talk in the N NPC conference. Yes. yes. But, yeah. So in general, you can see that especially the D gap formation 
actually they have a very nice uh, geometric shape compared with the other five formulation. So uh, currently, if you are just try to consider the application of uh of to realize the complementary constraint, then probably the first, I mean the the scale, the, the most simple one is the scale, the most efficient approach based on the recent some survey paper. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, these are rather yeah out of the existing relaxation methods. But uh, now we are trying um, a bit different yeah approach. Uh, utilizing gap function, but this is also a very old idea uh, originated in the optimization theory. But uh, as far, as long as we know, uh, yeah, we apply this gap function at the first time to optimal control problems. Yeah, <laughs> there are some nice uh, advant uh, nice advantages in this ut utilizing this gap function. Yeah. Thank you. One question also. Mm -hmm. um, this would be in regards to the optimal control formulation for the robotics application with a predefined contact mm -hmm. pattern, but non predefined timings. Yes, yes. Um, do you think it would be possible to give instead of a, or would this break the problem, let's say, if um, instead of giving a predefined contact, you gave a predefined contact region instead? A region. Mm. Oh, let's see. Okay, maybe. Mm, I cannot, so uh, how to say region so we, um, it's, yeah of course in principle we can formulate but i'm not sure if can if we can still utilize the same approach i mean this efficient method uh, even when the we have we are given a possible contact to region instead of a point Mm. So you mean uh, we'd like to also optimize the contact point within a given region, right? Oh, that is right. Very interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting point. Mm. Or maybe you have you don't have a hard constraint on the con the the contact position, but maybe yes, a yes. soft constraint on it. Ah, soft constraint, yeah. Ah, okay, once we reformulate the problem by using the soft constraint model, then, yeah, then problem would be, uh, yeah, in general simpler, I guess. Yes, so, yeah, how to say? Yeah, in that case, if, once we use a soft contact model, then the problem becomes just continuous or smooth nonlinear system. So yeah, it, it would be possible. Yeah, if we allow yeah, some mm -hmm. soft contact approximation, then the problem becomes much easier. And yeah, actually that's uh, what we often also yeah do in practice. But this is a kind of one of a very extreme, <laughs> uh, how to say, case to, mm -hmm. yeah, to explore the the you know the limit of the real time optimization, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. 